Hello from wherever you are. The Lord has given us another opportunity today to experience his marvelous grace and to be at his feet. I wonder how many of us took the time yesterday to just find out whether what pastor was teaching was true. How many of us had the Berean spirit to just go and confirm from this catechist of the Catholic Church whether it's true those questions that were asked and responded to. We do well to do so so that we can have the truth fortified in our spirits. For me, I didn't have to go and confirm whether those were true because a few years ago I was a catechist and I was teaching people those things, yeah? And I was telling them that the Sabbath is on Saturday, but because of the power of the church, they transferred the solemnity, big words there, from Saturday to Sunday, and that's why we keep Sunday holy. And until I came across this book, it's called When God Said Remember by Pastor Mark Finley. And he spoke in this book, questions were answered with every passing sentence. And when I was reading every sentence, I was like, I'm going to find this person and prove them wrong. But he would prove me wrong with every other sentence. So interestingly, today I was reading 2 Kings chapter 23 on the reforms by King Josiah. And I noticed in verse 11 that the tribe of Judah had actually set up chariots and dedicated them to the sun. That was really astounding for me because I've read the scripture severally, but my perspective had not been inclined to notice the reference of the sun. But when I read it today, after yesterday's sermon, I was shocked because those are part of the sins that led Judah into exile. And remember King Ezekiah got sick at some point and messengers from Babylon came to see the miracle that God had done. The health teacher mentioned yesterday that though God spoke to Hezekiah and said that you shall be healed, the medicine of the day, the treatment of the day still had to be administered to him. And that was a powerful reminder that we should not be arrogant enough to dictate to God the manner that he should heal us. That was quite something. That prayer does not take the place of duty. As you have prayed, what other thing are you doing regarding what God has revealed to help you get better? So today we are going to see what duty ought we also have as we are dealing with these lifestyle diseases. Our teacher, Tini, will invite us and expose us to nutrition as a means of reversing disease and leading a very healthy lifestyle. And while at it, remember this. The Sabbath is the seventh day. It is holy, sanctified, set apart, and hallowed by the Lord who is our creator. Now this book, when God said remember, is actually the word version of yesterday's sermon. If perchance some English passed you, now this is your go-to place. It's small, you can read it in one hour maximum. And the beautiful thing is, those questions that develop in your mind as you study are actually answered in one of the chapters. The interesting bit too, is that at the end of the book, the last page is a prayer for dedication to God and a commitment to baptism. So it's a complete sermon in itself. So how can you get involved? You can walk out of church to the literature evangelist tent and acquire a copy. For those who are in Kenya, it's just 250 shillings. Once you have read, you can share it to someone. I came to read this book because a friend had left it on her desk. Meaning, mere possession is an evangelist tool in itself. But you do well to read too. Because God requires those who live in these last days to read, to hear, and keep the words of this prophecy. Today, we shall be taught on the subject of cults, how to avoid them, how to identify them, and how to overcome them if perchance you have been um, taken into one. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe as we study, as we hear the word of God together. Thank you.